Hi. How's everybody doing today? This is Anthony from The Basement Reef. And if this is your first time tuning into our channel, we're a retail aquatic pet store and houseplant shop located in Columbia, Missouri. We sell both saltwater and freshwater livestock, as well as all manner of tropical plants. And here on this channel, we talk about all kinds of things related to it. Today, we're going to do a really quick unboxing video. We got some neat stuff in from Sea Dwelling Creatures this morning, and I wanted to get the word out there about it before the weekend hits. We already posted another video today, so I'm going to try and keep this one super quick. Hopefully the editing is snappy. The first thing we always do when unboxing an order is simply cut it open and make sure that everything arrived all right. It's been about 95 degrees here in Columbia, Missouri lately, so it's good to see that they packed it with a cool pack. And everything looks good. After that, it's time to start temperature acclimating all of the hardiest fish in the order. We do that simply by floating them in the tanks that they're going to be going into. We do that for about 10 to 15 minutes. There is one fish in this order that we're going to be drip acclimating today. Ship acclimating is a slower method of acclimation, where you gradually add your own water to the shipping water so that the conditions don't swing too fast. The way that you do this, or at least I do it, is by grabbing some airline and tying some loose knots in it, and then starting a siphon. If you did it right, the water should be slowly dripping into the bucket. And then, about two hours later, it'll be ready to move this fish into his new tank. Now that the rest of the fish are done temperature acclimating, we can let them out. We do this by pouring them through a net to avoid putting any wastewater into our systems. Now, let's check out what we got. The first fish we got in today is an orange spot flinny. They hail from Fiji, and you can think of them like a slightly harder to care for, but infinitely prettier lawnmower flinny. This means that they eat algae, so make sure that you have a nice big established tank for them, and they'll do really, really well. After that, we have probably my second favorite of all the fairy wrasses, an exquisite fairy wrasse. The color on these guys are unreal, and as you can see, they're not shy at all. That's another thing I really, really like about them. And this guy is a Zanzibar coral banded shrimp, an awesome little reef shrimp. They don't get nearly as large or aggressive as their coral banded shrimp cousins, so I really like them, and their yellow certainly makes an impact. Grab him if you want something that you don't see all the time in your tank. Before we get to the fish that's been drip acclimating for the past couple of hours, we do have one coral to unpack. Now, when it comes to unpacking corals, I don't generally acclimate or anything. Straight into the water is the best thing for them. Our water is the right conditions and they should get to doing what they need to do. Let's do a short time lapse to see if this guy opens up. Mm, maybe a little, but he's going to need some time, so we'll come back to it. In the meantime, our mystery fish has finally finished acclimating. Now, it might be spoiled a little from the video title, but it's probably not what you're thinking. It's close though, and I'm super excited to have it in the store. This guy is a Swiss Guard Basslet, or Lyproproma rubrae. Now, he's not quite as rare as his cousin, the Candy Basslet. Those guys will set you back nearly $1,000 if you're lucky enough to find one, but it's close. Hear me out on this one. This fish is basically a rich, poor man's candy basslet. Like I said, the candy basslets are nearly $1,000, but there's really three similar fish that are available in the hobby. The most common one is Lyproproma swalisi, or the swalisi basslet. That isn't to say that they're common though. If you walk into your local fish store and see a swalisi basslet, honestly, grab it and run. That's a great find. And that brings us to the fish we have today. It's kind of like the middle version of these fish. The least colorful and cheapest is the Swalisi Basslet, and the most colorful and most expensive is the Candy Basslet. In between, you kind of have this fish. So what makes these guys so desirable? Well, to begin with, their color and pattern. They're called a Peppermint Basslet, and it's not that hard to see why. It's kind of reminiscent of a candy cane. The next appeal to me would really be their behavior. They're a deep water fish, so they take a little bit of time to get comfortable in a reef. But once they do, they're always out in the open, kind of hovering in place and fantastic to look at. These guys also don't get that big. They can be at home in a 10 gallon aquarium. So that's another point in their favor. No matter what size your reef is, you can probably keep one. Now, let's check back on our orange frog spawn and see if it's opened up. Sure looks like it has. This guy is a wall frog spawn, not a branching one. This means that the heads grow really fat and really close. It's not the easiest guy to frag, and he grows pretty slow, but this just adds to their rarity in the hobby. And the orange color, very uncommon. I'm super happy to have this guy in the store, and 
somebody's gonna be happy to bring it home, I'm sure. So why not stop by the shop this weekend, especially if you're in the market for a rare bass lit or a nice wall frog spawn. Anyways, as always, this is Anthony from The Basement Reef. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channel.